Welcome back to the Map for College Learning Community. My name is Ernest Manelli, founder of My Action Plan for College. And I wanted to share some ideas with ninth and 10th graders about certain milestones and activities that you could consider incorporating into your schedule so that you start to get a long range vision of what you may wish for the future. And I'll give certain specific pieces of advice as well as a couple of strategies. So let's get started. I think the most important thing for ninth and 10th graders would be that you don't have to wait until the 11th grade awareness and information process and the 12th grade application cycle. You can start to do certain things from a due diligence standpoint that can really help you and that won't be overwhelming. You know, the last thing you want to do is look so far ahead that you lose focus on the current time. So, again, maintain your study skills, maintain your sleep schedule, good nutrition, positive mental approach to life, all of those things. Seek out a support network within your family and friends. You know, surround yourself with like minded, positive people who themselves have goals because. You will often be a reflection. I heard a psychologist say that you will often be a reflection of the five people that you're closest to or the five people that you tend to spend the most quality time with. And that could be family, friends, coaches, teachers, you know, it could be people who are important in your life. You want to make sure that those people have goals. Now, the difference between one person's goal and another person's goal, that is a very personal preference. I'm just talking about people who have constructive, well-rooted value systems and have a plan for the future. That's most important. So when you're a freshman or a sophomore in, college, in high school, sorry, don't mean to get too far ahead. When you're a freshman or sophomore in high school, one of the most important things you can do is develop a really meaningful dialogue with your guidance counselor. Now, many guidance counselors, in fairness, many guidance counselors have huge caseloads. And oftentimes when someone goes up maternity leave or if there are budget cuts or if someone retires, you'll notice that certain school districts, even school districts that have the flexibility to do so, they don't always replace that person. They will sometimes just distribute the caseload that much further among the existing and remaining guidance counselors. So be kind to your guidance counselor. They're probably very busy, but they do want to hear from you. And if you make some sort of proactive effort to establish a line of communication in ninth grade, that will help you going into 10th grade, 11th grade, and 12th grade, especially with specific items like course selection. And also one of the things you can do from a college planning standpoint is you can start to consider Maybe you might not have a crystal ball as to your college major, but you might know what kind of person you are in terms of whether you want to stay close to home, whether you want to explore different parts of the country or possibly study abroad, different parts of the world. You might have an idea of your geographical preferences. And again, those can change over time, but you might start looking for schools within the geographical region or regions that are appealing to you. That's something you can do from a due diligence standpoint. You can create folders or spreadsheet. And I'm talking about maybe doing this like a couple times a month. Just build it in as one of your long range activities. The reason I mention this is that it's not too early to get on a, on a mailing list. For example, my oldest daughter is currently in ninth grade as I'm recording this video and she has reached out to certain schools that she thinks would be of interest to her in the future, and they have sent her certain promotional materials. They have sent her certain informational packets, brochures. One of them, one of the schools sent her, and they know that she's a ninth grader, but they sent her a really good um, description of programs of study, different projects that are going on of interest to her and her prospective department. So 
these things can be really helpful. Another tangible thing that you can do early on in the high school experience is let's say you're on a sports team or an activity, let's say debate club or drama or tennis or yearbook or a Spanish club, you might develop some sort of dialogue and communication with students who are juniors and seniors currently. You could always ask them if you have a good rapport with them, if they might be willing to take some time to do an informational interview. In other words, you can start to learn some of the success patterns that the upperclassmen are doing in your high school in terms of how they are navigating the early stages of the process, how they are planning for campus visits. So you don't have to get too far ahead of the game, but you could always start to establish communication patterns and again, build that support network. Another tangible idea and strategy would be to start incorporating kitchen table discussions with mom and dad. Start to think about their needs in terms of the family dynamic and the affordability factor for sending you to school. So when parents suggest the option of looking at the in-state public college or university option, I think as a ninth and 10th grader, if you've already had that conversation at the kitchen table, by the time you're in 11th and 12th grade, you will say, okay, I'm going to be open-minded. I'm going to keep certain public colleges and universities on my list, certain private colleges and universities on my list. We're going to apply for financial aid. We're going to cover our bases. So that's important. And one other note of strategy, and again, we would be happy to work directly with any ninth and 10th grader who, in fact, we do have clients who are currently in ninth and 10th grade with whom we're working and strategizing and sort of taking all those milestones that you would normally do anyway and just stretching them out so that you have some degree of availability to think and process information and gain perspective. So one more note for the purpose of this video would be you can also start to look into some of the campus-based publications and we have a separate video about alumni magazines and campus publications and their importance, you can start to check out every so often, hey, what's happening, you know, at Boston College or what's happening at University of Miami or, you know, oh, I want to read about this certain professor that I found at Rice University who's doing great things in my field of study. You know, it could be any college, any university, but you can always start to build your information base as soon as you can and the thing is that will give you inspiration and you will start to make all of those little mental adjustments of preferences because your preferences and thought process about which college which major which region of the country what possible career fields all of that is going to be in flux all of that is going to be an ongoing dialogue that you have and if you ask the right questions, if you build your network of support, if you keep track and do your due diligence in terms of information gathering, you'll be in a really strong position when it comes to making the actual choices that you need to make in 11th and 12th grade to succeed. So once again, please feel free to like this video, subscribe to our growing YouTube channel. We have more exciting educational content to come. Thank you.